talk about how to create a Java web application using Eclipse. So we have Eclipse open and I'm going to click on file, new, and then just a project. So when you click on project, you get a big menu and then click web and dynamic web project. When you click on next, what it does is it pops up a dialog box wherein you have to type in a project name. Let's call it first project. And you can see that it automatically puts it in a particular workspace. In my case, it is C colon user workspace first project. Now in your case, it could be something very well like my documents, etc. It doesn't really matter where the workspace is because Eclipse remembers the workspace and typically will put the project under your workspace. Now the whole concept of workspaces is because you can create different workspaces, put different projects in each and manage your product uh, projects beautifully. So we'll cover workspaces later. That is this next thing called target runtime where none is selected. Now you could select a target runtime of an application server and we can make it such that this project will run under that application server. Dynamic web module version is typically 2.4. 2.3 is kind of obsolete. 2.4 is what uh, runs on Tomcat 5 and above. Now we don't need to bother about configuration. Uh, we'll just say nothing at all basically and then click next. And then it's going to ask you three things. A context route. A context route is typically the way different Java applications run under the same JVM. That is a big distinguishing thing between JVM and actual Java application. A JVM runs under Java and an application server runs on a JVM. J JVM stands for Java Virtual Machine. We don't need to go into the details of what it is. Let us just know that context route is typically say, uh, different for each Java application. Uh, and that is how you distinguish different Java applications running under the same JVM. Content directory is basically where all your JSPs and HTMLs and images go. Java source directory is SRC where your Java source code will go. And we have a way of tying up both so that everything can be packaged into one single web application file. Finish. So it's basically doing something and it's going to create your entire project structure for you. So the way it looks like in Eclipse is uh, you have your first project here. If you expand this, you're going to get things like Java resources, build web content. Now, if you expand SRC, you pretty much see libraries. These are the base Java libraries. Now there is another thing we have to keep in mind. You will see all of the stuff under what is called as the Java EE perspective. Now Eclipse gives you an option to switch perspectives and you choose to work under a perspective as it is convenient to you. Now we'll talk about perspectives. The other thing I wanted to show you is web content under which we seem to have metainf and webinf and under webinf we have lib and webxml. Now this whole thing, this is what is called as the Java application structure and regardless of the Java application, web applications typically have this structure. You would have a web content folder, a webinf, a lib under it where all the jars go and a web.xml which kind of controls the whole application. If this web.xml is missing, then we pretty much don't have a Java application. It's as simple as that. So I'm going to open up the web application and it opens it up in design mode. I will switch to the source mode. And here it's a very, very basic web XML. What it has is basically saying that this file is an XML file. And then the next thing is a web app ID equal to whatever you can tap in your application name there. And then you have a version. You have a XMLNS, which is basically an XML namespace. Don't change any of the stuff. We have the other namespaces all sitting out here and then a schema location. XML schemas are basically ways by which an XML is validated. Now, all of this is kind of default 
for a web XML and we don't really need to change any of those things your display name is basically for repurposes it will be unique for a web.xml across different applications welcome file is basically the file that will uh, be invoked when the web application starts first so it's invoked in this order if it finds index.html it will invoke it if not it will invoke hdm if not it will invoke a jsp if not etc so that's the way it goes